G'day and welcome back. Bit of a treat for you today, a real treat. This is a set of radio gear I found while I was tidying up. I've uh, been tidying up the workshop. It's taken me ages to do because it's just like many, many years of accumulated rubbish, which I'm sorting through. I thought I'd thrown this out, but I hadn't. This is a radio control transmitter that I built, designed and built myself 40 years ago. It was about 1977 when I built this, designed it and built it. And we're going way, way back in time here. Um, you know, no digital trims, all, all mechanical, well, you know, semi-mechanical trims. There were a couple of switches up here you can't see anymore. Um, switch up here, oh, the switches are all buggered because it's so old and I put stickers on it, see? Stickers to make it look good. Uh, anyway, uh, and on this side we had a battery meter, this side we had a transmitter power meter. So, you know, this was pretty advanced for its time. I built it because I needed some radio gear and nothing I could find would do the trick. These switches were for mixing and dual rates. I had a mixer in there for elevons because I used to fly a lot of combat wings, radio control combat wings, and nothing on the market had elevon mixing, so I built it into the transmitter. And also dual rates because I had a couple of models that were quite hard to fly on single rates, so I put dual rates in. And it switched um, aileron and elevator, um, switched to high and low rate at the same time. But there you go. Um, Simpson Control Systems, that was me, um, way back when. So, a handmade aluminium case. These sticks were actually Futaba stick units, and they were quite advanced for the day because they weren't, way back then, most people had sort of like gimbals with a little ball in the middle, so there was a bit of slop, but these were actually really tight sticks. This was a fantastic system. I used it for many, many years, but as I say, uh, I found it, and I'm going to show you what's inside. Now, this is the antenna connection. Big, long, remember, long wire, huge fishing pole antennas go on the top there. And I'm going to show you inside because it's not a pretty sight, I'm afraid. The batteries were left in it, and old nickel metal, nickel, what are NICAD batteries, they went all rotten and corroded and rusted. And so there's been a lot of corrosion going on here due to the effects of the batteries spewing their ring. And this was a one off prototype bodge system. So you'll see a lot of stuff in here that I'm not particularly proud of, but it did the job way back when. Let me find something to point with. Look at all these bodge resistors up here. These were, I think, to um, set up the dual, oh, that's right, this is my dual rate switch on the top here, I think. So that set my dual rates up, and uh, I could switch high rates, low rates, and these resistors were basically switched in and out of circuit to change the, the rates. And here is the actual mixer for the elevons down here. Um, all analog stuff, um, just switched, there's, I think it's LM324 is it? Not sure, can't see. But uh, yeah, little board, separate board I made up when I decided I need an Elevon mixer for the models I was flying. Now down here, this is the RF board. Let me show you this. Let me see if I can come in a bit without it getting all blurry on us. I think it's still focused. So um, yeah, this was the RF board. This did all the, and this was back on 35 megahertz, I think. In fact, there's a crystal here. What, no, it's actually 27, is it? Let's have a look. Still got the crystal plugged in. Let's pl unplug it and see what frequency it was on. I can't remember for the life of me because it was so long ago. 40 years ago is a long time. What does it say? It says T for transmitter, so it doesn't really tell me. I could put it on the spectrum analyzer, but I think it was, I think it was uh, 35 megs. It may not have been. It may have been actually 27. It might have been that, yeah, it might have been 27. That long ago, 27 megahertz. Woohoo! So we had a little crystal oscillator here with a little trimming cap to get it on frequency because crystals are, they don't drift much but they're not necessarily deadly accurate so you trim it to get the right frequency, a little oscillator circuit here, a little power supply chip down here, well there's a linear regulator that's actually a transistor and a little LED, well I don't know what I had that in there for because you can't see it from the outside, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was part of my testing, it's so long ago I got no clues, some trimmers here, so there were a couple of trimmers for tr variable resistors, a variable capacitor, and then a little buffer stage where it went into there. Um, amplifier stage, twin tuned output circuits. That's a double pi circuit on the output there to get rid of all the harmonics and noise and things. And then the antenna connected up here somewhere. There. The antenna connected up on that piece there, I think, ran a wire off to over here on the, on the antenna mount. So that was it. That was the RF side of things. Don't want to look at the back because that corrosion has just completely munted it. Look at it. Oh, he's horrible. Horrible. Um, even though the board was coated with a polyurethane to try and stop any corrosion didn't work too well over the ravages of time have completely destroyed it so I ain't going to use that again am I but there you go that was the RF board now down in here is the um, logic board I might take that out let's take that out and have a look and see what a logic board look like now this will be just as corroded probably even more corroded than the RF board because it's down there where the batteries used to live and I can tell that screws got horrible green stuff on it but see, I even made it so you could take it apart and service it. Although it works so reliably, I never needed to actually fix it at any time. Although I did make minor tweaks. 
and I was thinking of manufacturing these, but uh, you know, life's too short. I had other things to do, so it was uh, simply used by me. Now, can I get this out? I can. Ooh, look at the colour of that. That's horrible. These boards were all drawn by hand with a resist pen and hand etched. And my gosh, that looks pretty hideous, doesn't it? The ravages of time have dealt to that. So here we go. This is the logic board. We'll try and get it in shot so you can see what's happening there. Um, somewhere in here there was a cock generator. This created a square wave pulse down here. Then it went through all here and we have our logic circuits which created a train of variable width pulses that we then used to modulate the RF side of things. But see, it was pretty bodgy, pretty bodgy. There was, um, it was a prototype. So you expect to make changes on the fly with a prototype. That was it. I mean, yeah, it's not as pretty as the, the new stuff, is it? But that's 40 years ago, this was state of the art. This was like cutting edge stuff. It had integrated circuits. A lot of the stuff way back 40 years ago didn't have integrated circuits. It just had separate transistors to do all this stuff. You'd find long rows of transistors and capacitors to do all the pulse generation for the different channels. And I think this was a eight channel system. I think I built it into it, which was got a lot of channels back then. Most systems were only like four, five or six channels. This was eight channels, although I didn't use all the eight channels, I don't think. And I did build a matching receiver. This was FM, by the way. I did build a matching receiver, but I don't think I've still got that. I think that's long gone. I think I did actually throw that out. But yeah, what a horrible piece of mess this is now. I don't know where the back is off it, but um, that just lets you see what I was doing 40 years ago in order to get some RC gear that worked for what I wanted to do. And what a shame I didn't take more care of it because <laughs> um, it would have been nice to fire it up, but I'm pretty sure with all this crap on the board, all that would come out of this is smoke. But there you go. I thought you might like to see a little glimpse into the past of what I used to do when I was a young chap in my 20s, many years ago, flying model aircraft. That's it. That's my home-built Radio Control Transmitter from 40 years ago. Now, if you've got questions, comments, I mean, this is another bit of this looking back in time stuff. I know people said they're quite interested in it when I did the bit up with the popular Mechanics Magazine and other bits and pieces. If you want to see more of the stuff that I'm finding as I go through all the rubbish here that is backed up over many, many years, then let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to accommodate you. Um, I know I've got a heap more stuff. I've got some other older RC gear. I've got some old Futaba gear, which did have the separate transistors. Might be worth taking a look at that. I've already showed you my OS Pixie single channel gear. If you, if you want to see that, then have a look. I'll see if I can find a link to it, put it in the description of this video. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Um, I'll get on with the tidy up. Jeez, it's a big job, I tell you. It's a massive job, but it has to be done. And uh, catch you later.